Hello captains and welcome to this X-Plane 10 video. This is going to be a follow-up video to our first impressions video of the Boeing 767 by Flight Factor. Uh, today we're going to be flying from Alicante to Madrid in Spain. Uh, now normally this is not a real route for the uh, 767, it does not fly this route. But as this is going to be uh, more of an instructional video, um, basically uh, we are going to fly this route. It's a short route, uh, but it should uh, allow us to basically uh, take a look at all the uh, systems of this uh, great aircraft by Flight Factor. Just a quick, um, a quick thought uh, on the 767. I've uh, done a few flights with it now. Uh, to be very frank, I kind of like it more than the uh, uh, more than the Rotate uh, Sim MD80. Uh, it, it's nicer. It's uh, more immersive. Uh, it's more realistic, uh, I think, in terms of its flight model. So, um, without further ado, let us uh, go ahead and jump into the cockpit and begin preparation for takeoff. Okay, so we're in the uh, flight deck, and let's go ahead and just bring up some... We need the high-pressure unit, and let me just put the fuel truck... Okay, the doors are open, so we should be right okay there. All right, and we're going to be flying today with 20,000 pounds of fuel. Cargo's fine number of passengers fine let's say optimize CG and let's load the aircraft check for failures there are no faults or malfunctions detected um, by the way while you're in flight uh, you can reset some of the failures uh, that you encounter but some errors will not reset using the reset all uh, what you need to do in such cases you need to be parked with the engines off you go to ground and you click on maintenance and that will basically service your aircraft okay so everything looks uh, okay here let's begin uh, with the amplify checklist alright so we'll go to power up battery you can go on standby power goes on auto I think I turned it off. Okay. All right. So the power is established. We can check that. Bus tie switches can go to auto. APU generator can go on. And now we can turn the APU. Let's wait for the uh, APU to uh, start. Looks like the plane is now loaded. Yeah, plane is loaded, so we can get rid of the fuel truck, stairs and passenger bus, and let's go ahead and close all the doors. Sir, it seems to be a... Okay, the APU is running now. Everything's on. Good stuff. So we got power. Let's continue with our checklist. Go to nav. Status display. Verify that the align lights are illuminated, which they are. So we check. Verify quantities. Oxygen pressure. Hydraulic quantity and hydraulic quantity oxygen pressure everything looks okay so we check that okay so let's begin with the programming the FMC I think that's easier that way 
position initialization, our airport is Lima Echo Alpha, oops, Lima Echo Alpha Lima. We copy that into the scratch pad. And that's it. Good stuff. The iris is now aligned. So we go to root and we are heading to Madrid, which is Lima Echo Mike Delta. Okay, and we activate, execute. Okay, so that is check. That is check. RT page. Okay, let's go to that one is also check. Departures. We are departing today. Runway 28 through the Astro 3 Delta SID. Activate. Good stuff. And then let's go to the arrival. And we are going to be uh, arriving through the Ban 3 Bravo Star. And oh, we're, we're going to be doing an ILS approach, runway 18 left. Today, there is no transition and execute. Let's go to the legs page and check for any discontinuities. It's we have one there. Let's clear this. So that's done. Let's check. Okay. And let's check our route to make sure that there aren't any, you know, unusual um, things in the route. This one looks good. Okay. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay. Good stuff. Put it back on map. That looks okay. And that now we can check. That is check. Verified. Okay. Let's set our performance data. Reserves uh, one. Cruising altitude today is 26,000 feet. And the cost index is eight zero. For takeoff today, we're going to be doing flaps five. And the temperature right now is 13 Celsius, which I'll put there. Trim is 2.4, uh, which is, uh, well, I think that's good enough. Our speeds today, V1, 122, VR, 129, and V2 is 139. The pre-flight is now complete, and the FMC setup is now completed. Okay. So we can check that. Performance is checked. Zero fuel has been entered. Fuel on the CDU is fine. And there is sufficient fuel for the uh, for our flight. CG is set, and the takeoff V speeds are also set. Okay, so now we can move on. Let me get rid of that. Your damper switches are on. EEC switches. We need to turn them on. Okay, that's done. Sys press light, check. Fine, they are checked. Left and right engine pump switches can go on. Utility bus switches can go on. General generator control switches go on. Runway turn off lights are off. They are. Emergency light should be guarded. Passenger oxygen light is on, which is checked. Ram air terminal unlocked light is verified. Engine control panel, engine start selectors to auto. Position light can go on. Anti-collision light is off. Wing light as needed. Then the... Uh, 
left and right landing switches are off, which they are. Left window heat, that's the window heat right there. That's done. Passenger sign panel. That's non-smoking sign. Seatbelt signs. And auto control. Uh, let me see. Cabin altitude panel. That's the one. Check landing altitude selector. Okay, that we need to change. Oops. To zero. Okay. So that is set. Air conditioning panel. Okay, so forward cabin temperature control. We need to set all of these to auto. So let's do that. That's done. Flight deck cabin temperature control to auto. That's done. Trim air switch goes on. Recirculation fan switches go on. Pack control selectors goes to auto. Left isolation goes on. Central. Isolation goes on, and right isolation goes on. Engine bleed switches go on, and the APU bleed air switch goes on. Okay, flight director, turn on. VOR DME switch, go to auto on both sides. Okay, so that's done. And oxygen check. Now, on the X oxygen here, for some reason, when you click it, it, um, it kind of put this hiss sound that stays there and it never goes away and stays for the duration of the flight. So I'm going to actually do an item override on this because it is extremely annoying. Okay, so these are set flight instrument. Let's check the flight instruments. Everything looks okay. Everything's fine there. That's fine. So let's check that. Autoland status annunciator is working fine. Let's check. ECAS display is fine. It's checked. Secondary engine indicators. That's fine. Okay, let's just, just check. App is checked. Okay, all of this is checked. And that is checked. Okay. Auto throttle, you can arm now. Right, let's check. Oxygen is set. Flight director source selector is set. Auto lance is check. Everything is fine. Okay. Takeoff thrust reference is checked. IS bug are checked. We have our VR, V1, VR, and VREF. Um, the map is checked. Initial altitude is checked. Actually, let's put that to uh, our cruising altitude of 260. Okay, that's done. And now the hydraulic panel, right electric pump, goes on, 
C1 and C2 hydraulics go on. The left pump switch on goes to auto and the center air pump switch goes to auto and now we do the fuel pumps the left goes on the right goes on red anti-collision light goes on recall switch we press that and now we check the trim which we've already set so that is checked and now we're pretty much ready for um, engine start so what we'll do is we will call the pushback truck now and then we will uh, start the engines. Okay, yeah, let's switch to exterior view. We need to get rid of all the stuff here. So let's remove the high pressure unit. And let's get rid of the ground hound handling. guys. Okay, so we've begun the pushback. Okay, in the meantime, we can go ahead and... Okay, secondary engine indicators select. Right, so the engines will now. back truck now. Okay, see you later guy. Okay, the second engine is now starting. Okay, let's see here, it looks like engine 2 stabilized. Okay, so the APU selector should go off. Engine NTI switches are checked. Pack control selector should go to auto. Okay, that's done. Left isolation should go off. Right isolation should go off. APU bleed switch should go off. Status of the display select. Okay, out of that. Flaps. Flaps 5. Or takeoff. Okay, I always uh, get fooled by the position of the uh, flap lever, but uh, okay. 
so that's checked. Flight controls, pull up, pull down, pull left, pull right, pedal, pull left, pull right, it's fine. Check that. Transponder. TARA. That's fine. Check. And everything else is checked. So we are now ready to basically uh, taxi to the runway and take off. So let's release the. Uh, ah, we've almost forgot the altimeter, which is for Alicante 1032. So let's set that here. Zero three two. Yep. Good stuff. And now we are ready to go. The lights there. Good stuff. So let's release the parking brake. And let's taxi to the runway. Okay, folks, so we are at uh, runway 28, ready for departure. So uh, that should go to RTO. The speed brakes are armed. And the taxi light is off. Strobe goes on. And we're pretty much good to go. You uh, there? Okay. Release parking brake. Someone actually told me that the transition altitude is 
Spain is 6,000. So let's set the uh, altitude to standard. Flaps are retracted, this arm will be speed brake, and everything else is okay. Okay folks, uh, welcome back. We are now cruising at flight level 260 on our way to Madrid and uh, we can go ahead and check here to see uh, we're still about 135 nautical miles from top of descent so we've got uh, uh, quite a way to uh, before we begin the descent. These guys keep bothering me. Uh, okay, so uh, everything uh, is normal uh, at the out of order. Uh, it's a bit uh, cloudy here uh, for Spain, uh, so we can't see the ground, which is kind of unfortunate because I wanted to show you the, uh, the UHD, Spain UHD scenery, which was uh, recently released for the entire country. Uh, and it is really awesome from, from this, uh, uh, this uh, altitude. It looks really, really nice. Uh, so, anyway, uh, hopefully we can do that in a future video, uh, but until we, uh, we are close to our top of descent, uh, we're pretty much uh, good. Uh, all the aircraft systems appear to be functioning, there are no holes or no functions, so everything seems good to go. Uh, so enjoy the flight, and I will check back with you uh, right before top of descent. I think I'm going to kill this time. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll check back with you right before top of descent. Welcome back, folks. Uh, so we are now getting uh, close to our top of descent. Uh, we're about 21 nautical miles from top of descent. So let's go ahead and trigger our aircraft for our approach to the grid. So the first thing, let's go ahead and set our altitude to our final uh, altitude of 4,000 feet. And we've got to remember that the transition altitude is 6,000. Okay, and the aircraft should begin automatically uh, its descent uh, as soon as it reaches the top of the descent mark. Okay, everything else looks fine. It's a pretty, uh, pretty mountainous uh, approach into the grid. We should be able to uh, clear the mountains before our approach, especially that area over there. Uh, some high mountains. So uh, we need to be careful with uh, our descent rate and watch for altitude. Okay, right there is uh, our top of descent. Altitude. So 
let's leave it and monitor everything for a while and just make sure that uh, everything is fine as we begin our descent uh, to, to the grid. Okay, let's check the FMC here. So we have to be below 19,000 feet by the time we clear 26 nautical miles, which is bad. Okay, so just by looking at things here, uh, the first thing I noticed that we're too fast. So what we need to do is click on vertical speed and reduce speed to 240 knots. And let's arm the spoilers to help reduce speed. So we are still slightly high. Uh, we need to clear um, another 3,000 or so feet uh, to take us to uh, basically uh, flight level below 16. Uh, but I'm okay with where we are right now. We're about uh, 18,000 feet. We're not too high, we're not too bad. Uh, but we need to watch that as we uh, as we get closer to uh, to Madrid. Uh, this area here, as you can see in the radar, is is a mountainous area, so we need to be very careful uh, with our descent rate and uh, and watch for our altitude. Uh, but other than that, we should be okay. Back, folks. We just passed the uh, the 10 uh, 10,000 feet uh, mark. So let's go ahead and turn our landing lights on, and let's set our air brake to two. Let's arm the spoilers, and now we need to continue to watch our altitude and speed. And reduce our rate of descent to about 1,100. 
10,000. And our speed is good. We're actually pretty close now. Um, so what we need to do is, uh, as soon as we clear these mountains ahead of us, uh, we're going to start reducing speed. And it's uh, probably... Yeah, we need to introduce... Uh, let's see, let me hear. Let's see, remaining distance here before... Yes, so as soon as we clear the uh, the mountains ahead of us, we will begin uh, basically at reducing speed and introducing flaps uh, to reduce our speed uh, to our final uh, approach speed. Let's go ahead and check the ILS is 11115, so let's set that. 11115, and the course is 181. Okay, so the eyeless frequency and force are now set. Okay, and so 30 degree flaps, 129. I'm going to add 5 knots for, to compensate for wind. So that's going to bring us to 134 and 30. So flaps, oops, flaps 30. And our final approach speed is going to be 1. Three, four knots. Terrain, 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 terrain. Yeah, obviously this terrain, area is terrain. a mountainous area, and the GPWS is starting to give us warnings about our altitude. Okay, so everything here is set in the FMC. We are actually pretty close to the ground there, so. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're we're clear of danger, as uh, the rest of the uh, way to Madrid should be clear. So I'm going to go ahead now and reduce speed to 180. Okay, and I am going to. Flaps. Two flaps. What is that? I have to see. Flaps five. Okay, so. We still, uh, our descent rate is good. Uh, we're passing the 6,000. We're pretty close, actually, to our transition altitude. So let's go ahead and check the transition altitude at uh, Madrid. Request. And the transition altitude is 1033. So let's set that. 1033. All right, let's do the same thing here. Pull up. Pull up. Pull up. up. Now, on descent rate, we can go to 800 feet per minute. Pull up. Pull up. The GWS is uh, is a bit concerned about our altitude, but uh, we're fine. Okay, everything looks good. And now this is basically the the runway right there. So I'm gonna speed down to uh, actually the ILS so uh, let's go to uh, 170 I'm gonna arm the approach button now and we are actually 
very, very close to uh, to Madrid. Okay, folks, so we are oh, almost... Uh, this is very annoying, this guy. Anyway, uh... Pull up! Pull up! Oh, come on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to introduce Flapston gear down. Pull up! And we're going to reduce speed to... 160 Pull up! Pull up! Okay, looks like gear. Down oh, three up. green. Let's reduce speed to 150. And reduce flaps 25, I believe that is. I need to get these. Uh, no, that's flaps 15. Okay, the next one's 25. And let's just uh, verify our speed one more time. Which is one three four for our approach. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce speed down to one four five. Introduce flaps twenty five. And the localizer, we've intercepted the localizer now. Light slope is active. Okay folks, I hope that you've enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. There was a bit of a glitch towards the end recording this video, so I had to re-record the, uh, the landing uh, basically using uh, the replay mode. Uh, I hope that you don't mind this too much. Uh, until we meet next time, I wish you, uh, for, the, for those of you who celebrate Christmas, I wish you a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. Bye-bye for now.